What is going on? I am Aves and today I'm really excited to be sharing a development tip with you folks. That is probably gonna blow your mind. I can't even wait. So, but before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel or hit that bell icon or follow me on Twitter if you want to be notified when I create these weekly one dev minute development tip, you know, videos or just tweets. So see you there, let's dive in. So right now we are headed towards the, you know, more meatier and interesting part of this course where I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can send inputs and create an output from Node.js. But sadly, before we do that, you probably need to understand what is Node event loop, how events work in Node.js, what is the process behind it? What is the Node process? There, is there uh, something called window inside of Node? What is really happening here, right? Uh, and I'm not going to go a lot more in details here, just a bunch of stuff from the top, you know, a hundred feet overview of everything. So you basically understand a little bit more about how Node.js is created and why we are doing this stuff, how this stuff works, right? So whenever you want to go inside the node read evaluate print loop, you can just type in node, provided you have node installed, and it will take you inside the read evaluate print loop. And now what I want to tell you is, for example, if you type in the type of, uh, let's say window, you will see that window is basically undefined in Node.js. If you type in the same thing in your browser, you will see that window is actually an object inside of your browser. And this is one of the main difference between the JavaScript V8 engine running inside of your browser and the JavaScript V8 engine running inside of your shell, you know, inside of your computer. It's sort of a backend JavaScript services. Basically, Node is a C++ library, which also includes the JavaScript V8 engine we see in these browsers. But Node.js is actually a little bit different than JavaScript, right? So instead of window, what we have here is a global object. So generally the stuff that you see on your window in your browser is basically the stuff you have on global object inside of Node. It's not a head to head comparison, just for the sake of this discussion, you should know that there's a global object in Node.js and a window object inside of your browser somewhere. Now, if you're like any developer, you have probably heard of event loop inside of Node.js. And if you go ahead and Google it, you are going to get a bunch of results. For example, these images on how event loop works in Node.js. The problem is a bunch of these images are actually completely wrong about how event queue works, how event loop works, and how the thread pool exists. This is actually not how what Node.js event loop looks like. So to try and make sense of it, you can definitely go ahead and read the code if you know C++ and whatnot. Or you can head over to the documents of Node.js and you can try and understand the Node.js event loop timers and you know the next tech process of whatnot. For example, here they define event loop like this. The event loop is what allows Node.js to perform non-blocking IO operations, despite the fact that JavaScript is single-threaded. So JavaScript is single-threaded, but Node.js has the ability to not block that thread when performing multiple input-output operations. And it does that by offloading these operations to a system kernel whenever possible. And you can, you can think of this as your OS, you know, the system kernel. It could be Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. So what Node.js does is whenever there is an input-output operation happening on the event loop of Node.js, it actually offloads a lot of those operations to your OS and takes help from your OS. And that is basically what differentiates Node.js from JavaScript, which is naturally single-threaded. Anything you try to do with JavaScript, it is actually going to block that single thread, you know? And since most modern kernels are actually multi-threaded, they can perform multiple operations executed in the background. When one of these operation completes, the kernel basically notifies the Node.js, right? So that Node.js goes ahead and callbacks your appropriate callback, adds it to the poll queue, and eventually it gets executed. And they try to kind of build this image of how event loop works. For example, there are incoming connections or data or whatnot. And there's a bunch of timers, some pending callbacks, some idle or prepare processes, a poll queue, check that is checking a bunch of things. For example, it could be something that is checking the references. If they are greater than zero, the, the event loop will basically continue. 
And finally, the close callback when there's nothing for Node.js to do, it is just going to go ahead and basically exit itself, right? If you would like to dig in a little bit more deeper on what is Node.js event loop, I recommend this talk by Bert Builder, one of the core contributors of Node.js early on. If you take a look at the Node.js repository, here's his profile, Bert Builder. And you can see he's one of the core committers of Node.js. And he was pretty active early on from, you know, 2010 and whatnot. In this video, Bert goes on to explain that the Node.js event loop basically looks like this. It gets triggered by whatever file is trying to run Node.js. For example, in our case, we have this index.js file, which runs a particular CLI. And then a particular event loop starts, the Node.js process begins, Node.js processes are global, and it loops around a bunch of processes. And finally, when everything is done, it basically cleans itself and the Node.js process basically goes ahead and exits itself. And the bunch of things that I talked about here, they actually look something like this. There are a bunch of timeouts, a unicorn function as he describes, which is actually the Node.js function that goes back and forth to process all the network and Discord child processes information. And this is basically where all the Node.js magic happens. And when everything is done and processed, there are a bunch of closed events that run, clear out the memory or whatnot, the worker threads. And finally, after everything, the Node.js process exits. A more deeper look into how this event loop works is that there are a couple of timeouts, you know, or you'll see all these clocks. And for each timeout, Node.js basically takes help from your kernel. Your kernel could be your OS, you know, Mac OS, Linux, or Windows, or whatnot. And it basically asks your OS to notify Node.js as soon as a particular set time out runs out so that Node.js can call a specific particular callback and run an event loop inside of these yellow boxes as well. You know, all of these JS yellow boxes are processes. They have their own event loops and whatnot. And to process all of this information, there are naturally these worker threads that are working in the background to try and process what your Node.js program is trying to do. And finally, for all these processes, there are references. And these worker threads kind of keep refs to make sure that this event loop keeps on running when there are more than zero refs. Finally, when there's zero, the entire Node.js event loop process basically exits itself. So at a particular time when Node.js is working, it is actually getting a lot of help from your kernel, the thread pool, and depending on your OS, a couple other things, right? And this is not really as simple of a process to be explained in a short video like this, uh, but actually goes on to explain that these Java set boxes have their own event loops running. For example, if there's a promise, this callback is going to, you know, run in a loop and resolve that promise or that callback with next take or whatnot, right? So you, you get the basic idea that there is a sense of an event loop inside of Node.js. It takes care of everything that you're trying to run with Node.js. It has a concept of setting timeouts or whatnot. It uses help from your OS and finally processes every information sort of an async way. And that is what we call Node.js. It's a, it helps you run a lot of asynchronous IO tasks, input output tasks, and it's not single threaded as JavaScript is. Moreover, if you go to the Node.js documentation about events, you can go ahead and read a little bit more about what Node.js events look like. So much of the Node.js core API is built around this idematic asynchronous event-driven architecture. What it actually means is that there are certain kind of objects, which they call emitters, and they emit named events. And these events cause these function objects, which are called listeners to be called. All the objects that emit events are instances of this event emitter class. You can use event emitter class to basically define your own custom events or whatnot. For example, if you require the events, you create and extend this event emitter class, and you, then you can go on to create your own event emitter. For example, you can define a particular event and you can trigger that particular event, which will in turn call back this function which is console login that particular event occurred. And then you can emit this event using your emitter this way. So this is a very basic overview of an event loop inside of Node.js. 